so good to have you on the program, uh, Inca, Inca Taria. And a happy new year to yeah, you. Good morning, David. Uh, good. Happy new year. Uh, don't, don't do it. I'll say happy new year. Let's and see. Uh, good morning, Jewel. Can you hear me? Yes, sure, we are loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we, we can. can. Oh, All right. Okay. Uh, on a lighter note, on yes. a lighter note, yes. maybe go for your PVC because uh, Atiku Abubaka is waiting for you. Ah, okay. Uh, well, the campaigns are on as it is. So let's begin. Right, from, okay. he, he has started I'm his endorsement. Okay. You see, you see um, in Kotaria, uh, Okunabo, <laughs> you have started the conversation by an endorsement. This is the form of an endorsement, which is what we are looking at today. So much came out of the endorsement, the pronouncement by former Definitely. President Lucia Gobasanjo. And I did say to everyone that cared to listen, freedom of speech, anyone can endorse anybody. Like you just endorsed your preferred uh, candidate at the moment, even though we will have to surcharge you for that after the show. However, why so much, why so much reactions and counter reactions over uh, uh, an endorsement by the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo? If you can tell me, why so much counter reactions? Well, first and foremost, you know, you have what you call news determiner. As, as a journalist, you know you have what you call um, prominent, consequence, proximity, timeliness, and all those news, determin news determiners. Then you also have the who, what, where. So about in your fault on the um, who and timeliness. Now, about in your was a former military head of state. He was the president of the country for eight years. So you cannot just really dismiss such a personality. That does not mean that his endorsement has any form of gravitas. No. But you see, it also has to do with the consequence. It is not all about, sorry, it doesn't have to be prominent. It is not all about the consequence in terms of what he said. It has to do with the man that said it. And that's why it's, it's, it's having this, generating this kind of Ferrari that is generated. Otherwise, we all know that President Lusogdo Obasanjo does not really have what it takes to guarantee a victory for any particular political, particular candidate. Uh, this is somebody that cannot be lost, constantly lost in the West, lost in this war. Uh, but because he was a president, you can't just wish him away like that, you know. And that's where the issue of prominence comes in, not a matter of consequence. Who said it? Obasan just said it. Oh, I see. So it was Obasan that said it. Then it becomes, it, it, the media now contemporizes it. It becomes an issue in the media. Uh, in 2019, he endorsed Atiku Abubakar, reigned the conium from Atiku Abubakar, said all kinds of nice things about Atiku Abubakar. Today, he endorses the topic. We all know that it's a, it's a uh, about the contradiction of paradox. Oh, oh, all right, open up all. And in the evening, he tells you this. So I don't think we should really bother ourselves. And like David rightly said, why should this generate the kind of Ferrari generated? I mean, it's everybody's right to endorse. No doubt about that. Oh, right. If you don't like the endorsement, vote for a candidate of your choice. If you like open the endorsement, you go. I mean, your line of thought established. But if you want to look back, let's even set aside the recent endorsement by former President Lucia Obasanjo of Peter Obi. Of course, we had a couple of groups also, individuals coming out to endorse uh, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, as well as uh, Senator Bola Tinubu of APC, and even NNPP presidential candidates. It goes on and on and on. But from your moment since you started to really look through the electoral process in the country, had there been any time that such endorsements had direct impact in the voting patterns of the electorates, leading to uh, deciding what results that uh, such elections produced? That's what I'm saying, you know. You know if, you, if, you are to, if you are listening to me, I said it doesn't have the gravity, it doesn't have the weight. Yes, now, in the issue of 2014, 2015, it was more or less like a puke. He ended up, um, the present president, now the sitting president, that is um, Muhammad Buhari, he endorsed it. But 
the, that, and no doubt about that, at that time, because of the propaganda being carried out by the APC at that time, and I must commend the APC at that time, because they did, their propaganda was very good. And because of the propaganda, which Nigerians are regressing today, because of the propaganda carried out by the APC, well, it sort of, um, how would I put it, um, sort of uh, met with the adjustment of Olusegun Obasanjo, not necessarily because my partner endorsed Muhammad um, Ugarida, that was Muhammad Ugarida, no. In 2019, he endorsed, uh, what's his name, um, Good Love Jonathan. I mean, I mean, what's his name, with all, all due respect. He endorsed Good Love Jonathan in 2019. Sorry, I think of Buhaka in 2019. What happened? I think we lost. So the issue of 2014 and 2015 was just a few. That's the truth about it. It was just a few. So that's why I keep saying that the endorsement, it is his right. It is within his virus to show endorse whoever he wants to endorse, just like any other Nigerian. But the fact is that endorsement does not have the, the potency, does not have the weight to translate to victory. And so I don't know why people are busy talking about the endorsement of a candidate by like you rightly said, groups have been endorsing. But the difference between the groups and the is that some of these groups have the political clout. They have the followership. And so when they endorse, it becomes uh, a bandwagon. Everybody that belongs to that group will now. That was why the issue of Afeni Ferenc's case, that's why when they said Afeni Ferenc had endorsed a candidate, it became an issue. Because you're looking at the Yoruba race. Endorsing a particular candidate, and you can imagine the vote that candidate will get Yoruba race. I'm not saying if every Yoruba man will vote, of course, he will have this uh, dissension, no doubt about that. But in the case of General, uh, or oh, sorry, the term is now Chief Olusegun Passenger, in the case of Chief Olusegun Passenger, he doesn't have that way. He doesn't have it. So if you like, let him endorse. One it could be one billion times and does article one billion times and does uh, uh, pop as one billion times. It may be a passenger, his wife, and members of the public, and his dependent by vote. But even when they voted for him in, in 1999 and in uh, 2003, he still lost in his war. I don't think we should dissipate energy on who a passenger and does and who a passenger does and does. But given his place in this society in Nigeria and in the world, because he's also a world leader well respected in the world because he handed over in uh, 1979, even though he tried to extend his tenure in 2003. And it was very resisted by the National Assembly, heavily led by Atiku, who was then the vice president. So the endorsement of uh, uh, Peter Obi will not translate into victory. If today Peter Obi is simply because of what Peter Obi has done, it's simply because of his endearment, because of the policies, Maybe people love it. Nigerians love it. Not necessarily because of passenger and dust. You know, uh, the, in, in Kuteria, we this conversation is going to get deeper than this in, in, in a bit. Um, I'll take you back on something you said initially, which was the fact that you alluded that um, Obasanjo's endorsement is inconsequential. Uh, I've, I've seen some party members did say, uh, that um, he can't even win a vote in his constituency on his local government. I've heard parties say all sorts. And you keep asking, why then do politicians go to um, Olusegun Obasanjo if we, if you people say that his um, uh, endorsement is inconsequential in this conversation? Why then do we keep going to him? Every party representative uh, finds a way to go to Otafam to see uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, and then when he, when he speaks, some people say it doesn't hold, um, hold, hold water. I will tell you why, David, I will tell you why. It is the height. And the problem, for example, look at, look, look at, look at the Ferrari that has generated now. If they have said, open up and uh, social person, will it make this? David and Doc, will it make this? But when you saw passenger and that's the prominence I'm talking about, you know, which is one of the determinants of news. That's the prominence. This was a former head of state, a two-time president of the country, a man that is respected internationally, no doubt, as a person. 
So when you go to a passenger, you see they go with the media stream through every place so that there will be this media hype. And to a very large extent, you know, bit of this solar, you know, before even bit of this sweat to see a passenger, when it was uh, in the realm of speculation and so on, conjecture. You know, a lot of people were saying, ah, let's wait to, for who a passenger will endorse. Because before then, one other presidential candidate had come to him. Peter B went. And when he went and the presidential passenger endorsed him, it became news because if it fails, to, if, if it's not made news, then which means the media team of Peter B is not working. That it means the media team of Peter B is checking his responsibility. It's always, it's the height. Because you are talking of Olusha Baba. Okay, for example, now it's like Olusha Baba and attending your son's wedding, attending your daughter's wedding. It's news. When you say dignitary, but does that mean Olusha Baba and your contributor to the wedding? Open up, but where are coming at this point? It would seem to me that you are holding both sides of the road. Uh, you but just said you just said a while ago. Thank one moment, know. open up one moment, please. That such endorsements wouldn't really hold waters. And just now you're saying that the hype really would get people talking. Um, how do we marry those two sides at this point in time? Because the buzz has refused to go down since I January the first. I, I just I, I just use wedding hypothetical as an example. Now, if your daughter or the son is getting married and a passenger attends, of course it should be news that a passenger attends. But that does not mean that if you had failed to attend upon invitation, if you had failed to attend, the wedding won't have been a success. And if it was going to be a failure, if it was going to be a flop, it will not still be a failure. That's that's just it. But you see, when they are saying, because during work, they'll say, a man like a passenger attended your wedding. I said, prominent. I, I keep emphasizing that, prominent. He has attended that. You can't take that away from him. That is one fact that you cannot take away from him. You know, it's like Ganifa and when Ganifa was alive. If Ganifa and me, at, 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 at every function he attended made news. But when he contested, what happened? So that is the hype I'm talking about. That is the prominence I'm talking about. So, if many people have endorsed Peter Obi, many, but are we talking about them now? Some will even forgot. So it has to do with the prominence. But what I'm saying is that prominence doesn't have that gravitas. It is media hype. It's just like Razmata. It's media hype. It's as simple as that, and that is the extent to which it will go. But as a man that is even endorsing you, could not endorse himself in his work. We all know how he won the election. I'm not saying he read. Because that gave me the picture. We all know that. So it's I can't say this is to be today we God will not allow it anyway. But I think we will win. Uh, if it's not today we win. No, it is my duty. It, it is my duty <laughs> to come. It is my duty, um, open up, to come at this point in time that, in as much as Nigerians are free to speak out their mind and, in fact, canvas vote for whoever they want and vote their choices, uh, it's, it, it won't be a good thing for us to allow that another candidate uh, will be run down on the show. Uh, however, let's continue on this conversation. No, I, no, saw, no, I saw no, a couple, no, 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 because you're saying God forbid, no, 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 and that's, uh, we, Bonobo, we, one we, moment, we please. Well, you are free to that's speak. You, you are free to speak in support of your presidential candidate, but not at the detriment of other presidential candidates. You can speak for your own and not necessarily against the other. That's what we're trying to say. Uh, because we, we want to ensure that the electoral process uh, is, is yeah, very yeah, peaceful. Yeah, yeah, Let, let's move on. <laughs> One moment, please, open up. You, you will not demarcate that candidate. You have to demarcate that candidate. That's why it's coming. But you don't disparage it. Open up. Okay, can we reroute back but to... Can we reroute to uh, the discussion <laughs> of the day? Uh, still talking about endorsements. I saw okay. that November 4... 2022, the, the, some actors of a, a particular guild endorsed a presidential candidate, and just about a month after, another guild of such, uh, from such families, well, endorsed another presidential candidate. 
And the more you look uh, across social media, you see that individuals are beginning to speak and move in that direction. Uh, with the electoral acts in place at this point in time, what are those contents that you see going on through political parties to the electorates that can act as endorsements, uh, even the hearts of the, the uh, opposition? I saw some time ago when I was very young, uh, an opposition party speak, singing a song composed by the opposition party. Are you looking at anything like that? Are they happening around you? Is this something you're looking forward to in days to come? Did you get I'm trying to say the, the, the reaction of the electorates to us even coming together as individuals or groups to endorse the preferred candidates. How much impact do you think this would have uh, when the elections come later on in the earlier in the year, February and March? Well, you're talking about the effect of endorsement, if I'm right. Absolutely. Like a group you're, of people. You're talking about the impact of endorsement, am I right? Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying, the impact of endorsement. Yes. By group groups, isn't it? Okay, okay. Yes, they do. For example, um, you have the John National Congress, for example, made up of politicians, well respected, uh, the sons and daughters. Of course, they also have their followers. And so if the John National Conference, this is just hypothetically, if the John National Conference you say, this is our candidate, this is the that you are going to vote for, of course, you have the same thing view. No doubt about that. There are certain things, no matter how you preach to them, will definitely vote for a particular candidate. But the majority will now vote for that particular candidate that is prepared by the, the John National Council. So when you say you have endorsed, especially by groups, bodies, they have respect. Because for you to, first of all, the groups have leaders. These leaders have followers. For you to be a member of that group, which means you believe in the leadership of that group. And before they come out to say we are going to endorse a particular candidate, they must have met and arrived at it. That does not mean, again, that every member of that group will vote for that candidate. But the truth about it is that majority of the members will vote for that candidate. And you'll agree with me that election is not about majority reality. And so when majority of the members of a particular group vote for a particular person, of course, it's an addition. It's an addition. And so you cannot dismiss endorsement. You can't dismiss, and not at all. And these are the effects the impact of group endorsements. Let's now take a look at the things that are going on with the electionary campaigns and the manifestos being churned out by a political party uh, candidates across board. What's your view of how Nigerians are receiving these messages, especially in regards to your thoughts uh, on the contents, which are promises made to Nigerians, again, seeking their votes? Okunabo, did you get me? Uh, I think we may, I'm not sure that we connect. Can you unmute your device if you can hear me? Because we can't hear you from here. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Sir? Yes, now, yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I don't believe in manifestos. These are uh, political rituals. I could get uh, an expert in uttering a manifesto that uh, looks so brilliant and so on. Uh, I need to do is pay him. And the job is done. I believe more in my perception of a candidate and in the antecedents of a candidate, not in manifestos. Because I could get somebody who is so brilliant from UK, US, not even in Nigeria, so that uh, uh, he will not squeal tomorrow. And they will put it together, conflict all the ideas, ideas that are not even mine. You remember what Buhari said, President Muhammad Buhari, when they said your party manifesto, he said I was not part of it. 
This is public knowledge. So we don't believe in man. I don't believe in manifesto. Mm -hmm. I believe in my perception of you and in your antecedents. And that will determine my choice of a candidate and not manifesto. Okay. All right, um, um, Inkotoria. <clears throat> let's 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 go back a little bit again to um, the letter, the letter uh, that supposedly endorses uh, Peter Obi again. Uh, unfortunately, uh, your party members are staying with uh, uh, the fact that he endorsed uh, Peter Obi. A lot of them refuse to also look at um, other contents within that letter, which is key. To this conversation, 65% of Nigerian uh, the electorates are, are Nigerian youths, are youth, and the letter is asking Nigerian youths to begin to think differently and ensure that uh, they vote in someone that could deal with the current concerns that the nation is faced with, uh, the economic concerns, uh, poverty, uh, 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 inflation rates, lack of job, jobs rather, uh, debt. Debt, uh, debt concerns. These are all uh, the concerns that the letter uh, throw, throws out. However, we, we are all just staying with the fact that he's endorsing a particular candidate. Let's visit the other concerns. How pertinent are those concerns that the former president raised? They are quite pertinent, no doubt about it. Uh, we are with digress is the assertion that only one man could uh, provide the panacea to those problems. If you also read the letter in 2019 when he endorsed Atiku Abubakar, he said all kinds of wonderful things about it, up to the extent of having an experience, having been vice president, uh, it was Atiku that managed the economic team, uh, Atiku has a network that uh, goes beyond the country. He has uh, financial, his financial acumen will help to bring in uh, investors. He said all kinds of wonderful things about Atiku Abubakar. And the question now is, between 2019 and now, has Atiku held any other office for you to, that will vitiate the assertions of uh, of in 2019? No. But he has even improved. It was even after that he started this university. And so on, in terms of going back to school and in terms of establishing a university in the country, which is one of the best in the world. So, what has changed? That is a conundrum. What has changed? And that's why I said it's done an embodiment of contradiction. You know, he wakes up in the morning, he has a mindset, and it is his right as well. Today I could prefer David, tomorrow I could prefer uh, Show. It's a matter of choice. I'm not quarreling with his choice. Not at all. Because I also have my, my choice. I have, it's my right. I'm not quarreling with it. But the truth is, if you say you prepare it to be today, do not demonize this other person. Because your integrity is equally at stake. As at yesterday, you said the man was the best. What are they? What are they informed your new position? That is the conundrum. That is the burning question. And he has not come out to say, this is what has informed Because after 2019, I now realize that Atiku raided the bank. After 2019, I brought a press information that Atiku murdered somebody. I heard that it can make sense to me. So before 2019, you were not seized of this bank. But post 2019, you are now, you now have what you call uh, better further details, particular. So based on the disclosure, I will no longer support this man. But we don't have mistakes. He has not come out to say, no, I made a mistake in endorsing this man in 2019. And don't forget that even if today you accuse a people of anything, the vice president of a country is more or less a spare tire, in quotes. The box stops at the doorstep of the president. And that's why I mean before 2019, when he was accusing the uh, Atiku Abubakar, I said, no, you're, you're in a battle thing, die for yourself. Because I thought Atiku could have done as a vice president with such a intention. It's not possible. The only thing that Atiku did as a vice president without a premature was going to court. And that is even a plus. Because that, that means he's believing the rule of law, 
that says he's a democrat. So what has changed between 2019 and now? The P2B you said today you are in that was the P2B that you called how many persons was this as about to impeach and remove from office at that time. What has happened? What has changed? And Nigerians, and this is like this, and that's sort of Nigeria, and that is why I said it is still with levity. That's why I said it is not all about the endorsement. You know, I keep saying there's a difference between prominence and consequence. As a journalist, you know what I mean. Consequence, you don't need to know who said it. What is important is what was said. That is the consequence. If you have prominence, it is yes. used because of Said it. you're, you're asking. So, yes. To answer your question directly, my brother David. Yes. yes. You, you're asking. To question directly, my brother David. The truth is, he has said. He has said. Okay, we, we apologize. We're having some challenges with your audio there. But if you can hear me now, the, the last question you did ask was uh, what had changed uh, between uh, the last time and now uh, for Atiku. Uh, just maybe, I'm not holding brief for the former president. If you can hear me, Ipudabo, uh, just maybe the fundamentals have a little bit heightened. We, di we didn't have inflation figures as high as it is today. We didn't have um, unemployment at this high. 35% uh, thereabout. We didn't have underemployment uh, just about that same figure as at this time when he, uh, before now. We didn't have um, security at this height. In. Just maybe uh, the former president looked at the fundamentals and he thinks that um, uh, for in his own wisdom, he probably feels someone much younger should be able to handle uh, these fundamental challenges. Well, uh, I, I must be honest with you. Don't forget that, yes, we are saying it's much younger. But experience counts. And this was one of the major reasons the same Olutoro Abadinho can fail for Tiku in 2019. Experience. You don't want somebody that will come and spend on the job. You want somebody that will come with his wealth of experience to address these issues, these burning issues. And so if you talk of the um, insecurity in the country, if you talk of the poverty that has pervaded the land and so on, you have somebody that is well experienced. He was a number two man in charge of the economy. He was a number two man in charge of the economy. So you need someone with an experience. We don't need somebody that will come and learn to the job. And that is the edge that Chiku Aboga has over this other one. This was a governor, no doubt about that. He was a governor of a small state. We should not go into what happened while he was a governor. We all know that the elections we are not held in local government. Is that democracy? For eight years, local government no election. You get appointed, get the tax committee member and chairman. Is that democracy? Just yesterday on the sister session, people were signposting some of the things he did in Anambra that is hunting Anambra people to tomorrow. But that's not why we are here. So you need somebody that has, has the experience. And they say experience is the best teacher. That's why you need a man like a Chico Abubakar to succeed. Well, don't forget that, like you rightly said, our, 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 our political engine is overheated. Social climate and civil inflammation. Economic atmosphere highly But We are headed slowly but steadily for a right with anarchy. And we need somebody that will stave us off, stave off that anarchy. We need someone without experience. Who is that man? Abubakar. And this is a, an employer of labor. Or this sort of uh, uh, production to work. But you keep importing your products into this country. You are not going to not to talk about to be. No problem. But for the reason of somebody that is an employer here in this country, creating jobs in this country, opening factories in this country, how else? What else do you want? Because one of our, one of our problems is exportation. And exportation. Oh, all right, right Okunabo. And that is why you have spike in the prices of particles, and including the food. That okay. we produce here were spot to import. It's rational and explicable. But that is where we find ourselves. Okay, open up. But we need somebody that will take us from the factories of despair to the bottom of food because of his experience. And who is that man? I think we have All right, open up. Uh, to an average person, and I, I want to say that school of thought, the opinion is the greatest people that can endorse you are those with the PVCs 
and who are determined to vote on the elections day because if they don't go out on such days then no matter what the endorsement you might have had from different quarters they are considered as being trashed what are you seeing with the movement around town where you are at this point in time the people that you know uh, with regards to the voting in 2023 general elections the people's endorsement what are you looking at In terms of PVC? How much of readiness do you see the people exactly, exhibiting? That's I asking, yes. No, it's cracking. That's why I keep asking again, sir. Are you talking about how many people have the PVCs that will go out to vote? Open up, open up, I'm trying to say, let, let me rephrase the question. The greatest endorsement yes. from the school of thought would come from the people who have the PVCs and are ready to vote on election days for the presidential and the national House yeah. of Assembly across board, and then the state government and the state House of Assembly and local government level. What are you seeing? What are you hearing with people's endorsements away from the public uh, figures whose endorsements are generating controversies across the country? You see, this, uh, this, this forthcoming general election uh, is going to be a novel one. Because I can tell you, and that's why a lot of us called on INEC when joined the net to ensure that uh, nobody is disenfranchised. Let everybody get the CBC. Because at the point INEC was being accused of frustrating uh, Nigeria, and all kinds of misinterpretations were woven into it. Uh, some said they want to disenfranchise certain persons they believe um, is the opponent's stronghold and so on. Well, whatever it is, INEC has come up to deny some uh, allegations. Now, the greatest endorsement you can get is the endorsement by the electorate. And the only way the electorate can endorse you is by casting their vote. And the only instrument in the eyes of the law that will enable you to cast your vote is your PVC. A lot of people will pretend to be with you because it's going to be secret ballot. They will pretend to be with you. Agree with you because they're hungry. They want money from you. But when they go out there, they will vote their conscience. And that is why the endorsement of the electorate and the masses is the most important endorsement anybody can get. But you see, I can tell you now, that endorsement could be tricky. You might have a rally. And that's why you really have campaign. You might have a rally. When you have a rally, you see APC, PDP, WWW, WWY, all kinds of people will come to that rally. They will tell you, we are for you. Tomorrow, the next one, you see the same crowd, we are for you too. Apart from certain known faces that are die hard party members. You can never tell who the masses will actually vote for. The crowd might be deceptive. The crowd you see might honestly be deceptive. I can tell you that. And that's why while you campaign, while you go on your hostage, you should also, while you go stomping, you should also pray that those, those you see there, the crowd you see, are genuine. Only God can say that. You just pray, you keep campaigning, do your best. Because only God can uh, be sure of who is going to vote for you. Not the crowd you see there. It could be very deceptive. But what we call, uh, call, call on Nigerians to do is to ensure that they get their PVC so that they can vote their conscience. Because we are all Nigerians and we are all suffering. We all know what we are going through, the hardship we are, we, we are facing. And the only way we can effect the change is through the PVC, not through the barrel of the God. Nigerians must understand this. And when they are voting, they must vote wisely. Because any mistake you make is another four years. There's nothing you can do about it. It's not even eight years. Thank you. 
the perfect place to uncall the conversation. Thank you so very much for your time and thoughts, even though you try to swave the conversation into an endorsement uh, for your uh, preferred candidate. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure <laughs> having you talk to us on the show. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, David. Thank you, David. And good morning, Joel. Thank you so much. Um, open up in Kotara as a public affairs analyst and indeed uh, we want to thank everyone who's been part of the program uh, today on the show. We also invite you to join us tomorrow morning 7 o'clock when we hope to bring you a fresh package. I'm Shung Oyedeji wishing you a wonderful week. And I'm David Bobadiki. As much as you can, please go on and ensure you get your PVC. Have a great day. <laughs>